This video is brought to you by Factor 75. More on that later. Yes, my minions, that's the way. Clear the classroom for the great Newbert. Wait, how did you get in here? Oh, well. Welcome to back for another video, I guess. Today we'll be discussing the Mechaniter, a new addition from the Biotech DLC, which may also be the most broken and overpowered thing Tynan has ever added to this room crime simulator. Well, outside of the new boss fights, that is. Would you look at that? Jeez. Well, we kind of barely survived that explosion, but it's okay because my classroom is secured in a pocket dimension. Ah, oh, yes, of course, mechanitis. What are they? Where do they come from? And most importantly, how do you get your grubby newly xenomorph paws on one? Mechaniters are paws that can control mechanoids from simple worker bots all the way to highly destructive death machines like these scorchers over here. Mechaniters are created through the use of mechlinks. Mechlinks can be acquired one of a few ways. One such way is through request see this storage robot over here it's called an exo rider and smashing it into tiny itty bitty pieces is what you want to do here once it's smashed a transponder should be hiding in the rubble bring that transponder back to your base and decrypt it at the research bench after decoding the transponder you will get a quest to call an ancient mechanite ship down to your base where you can harvest your new mech link from a pawn in the pod might be a little dangerous though but yeah, it'll be fine it'll be fine don't worry don't worry, just, just hit the button, it'll be good. There is only one other way that I know of to get a mech link, and that is from the new ancient complexes. These places might not look super dangerous, but they hold the potential. The head of the house has passed away and its residents are in disarray. If you want to get your new mech link, you will need to defeat all the foes that lie ahead. Now, before we talk about robots, let's discuss bandwidth. In order to get robots, you will need to have bandwidth available on your mechaniter. You start with some after you install mechlink. Bandwidth is represented by these yellow squares here at the bottom of your screen. You can unlock more of these by building special antenna for your mechaniter. Going through the week making videos can make it tough for me to keep up with other things around the house. And if you're a busy person like me, this might be the answer for you as well. Factor 75 is a super convenient meal delivery service that saves loads of time and frees me up to do other things around the house. Not only are these meals convenient for me, I also like that I can customize my deliveries based on my personal diet. And of course, being able to pick and choose what meals I get each week and how many I get is super nice as well. When I want to replace lunch for a few days, I can do that or other things. These meals are really good and give me the energy I need to power through my day. Use my link or go to gofactor75.com and use code pognubit60 for 60% off your first box. And just to make this a little bit more fun, once you click my description, we'll live update to count the number of purchases. Now let's get back to the video. Now with all that out of the way, let's talk about how to get your own, very own, mechanoids. Lifters are a common mechanoid and just so happen to be the very first mechanoid you will likely get upon equipping a mech link after completing the Exo Strider quest, a lifter will drop from orbit and join you, ready to help around the colony. The rest of the mechs are going to come from gestators. Just think of the army you could make with these. In order to use a gestator, you will need a subcore and some steel among other things. Subcores are simple enough to make if you want a simple mech. Small robots require basic subcores, which can be made at the subcore encoder for 50 steel and two components. Small robots that can and use these basic subcores include the following, the Militor, the Lifter, the Constructoid, and the Agrahan. Each of these robots are cheap and easy to make. I personally like making all of them, but I digress. The Militor is your standard security bot that can control your base and keep you and your kids safe. Dealing 12 damage and coming in with an aiming accuracy of 96%, he may not be the strongest bot on the block, but it's nothing to scoff at either. Using these bots in swarms, you can easily overrun enemy outposts and deter any would-be raider. Useless jobs get replaced and the same can be said for your pawns. Lifters are a self-explanatory bot that deal with all the lifting around your colony. No more haulers will you have in your colony for you have lifters. Returning to the topic of useless jobs, the builder has been automated away just as fast as the lifter has, entering the constructoid, the builder you never knew you needed. Farming is another task that used to take up time, but no longer with the Agrahan. No capturing raiders for your farms. No more dedicating pawns to farming. Agrahans can cut trees, plant seeds, and harvest crops. Your lifters will bring it all back, and you will never lift a finger on the farm again, unless you have animals. The clean sweeper is your run-of-the-mill Roomba. It will mill about the base, cleaning up all kinds of messes, and make its way back to the wall charger when it's done. 
Something I should mention is that all these new worker bots have batteries that will eventually run out. It's important to keep multiple charging stations around the colony to keep your metal friends running. They will also need to be periodically repaired between raids. If you can manage these things, you will have a buddy machine colony on your hands. Now we can move on to some of the more interesting robots. This is where things start to get interesting. You see, in order to make mechanoids, you're going to need to start messing around with pawns as well, specifically their brains. In order to make better subcores for your mechs, you are going to need to start scanning the brains of pawns. Rip scanners are what you will need for the next two robots. Unfortunately, rip scanners will kill the pawn that is scanned, but hey, just another day on the rim, baby. The fabricator is your new best friend, a worker droid to replace all the crafting room pawns. And then, of course, we have the paramedic, which is there for you and your pets. Now you can bring a medical bot with you wherever the fight goes. Finally, the fun bots, the bigger bots. The mechanoids from the largest gestator you can build are all that lies ahead for the rest of this video. I'm going to skip over mechanoids that are already in the base game and focus on the new ones to keep this video short. The tunneler is a piece of work built for digging out tunnels and mining in your base, but don't let its passive work fool you. This deadly beast comes pre-equipped with monstrous power claws and thick armor and an energy shield with a max charge of 250%. Get wrecked, tribals! The Scorcher is probably one of the more destructive bots you can get your hands on early to mid-game. Designed to shoot bursts of fire from every direction, this big guy isn't messing around. Perfect for crowd control and plugging holes in your kill boxes. Truly some nightmare fuel for would-be raiders. The Tesseron is a walking Tesla coil. The Tesseron, while weak and close combat excels at ranged defense, so well in fact that most enemies won't make it to the walls alive if you have enough of them in your base. What's more, a Tesseron's beam is so powerful it can blast through shields and set enemies on fire. Lastly, we have Legionaries. They are unique in that they not only can fire a very long range, but also come with a nice big shield that can protect it and your pawns. Ready to engage in various combat duties, the Legionary will make a great addition to your colony. Now we get to move on to the Ultra huge robots. These robots also require unique additional parts, namely signal chips and high subcores in order to function. These bots are also hard to run and keep running, and a single solar flare could be the end of your colony if you keep too many of them around. Now with that word of warning out of the way, let's get a move on. Easily a deadly weapon in the right hands, the Diabolus is a formidable ally to have around the base. Sporting a sharp armor at 75% and having the ability to burst flames like a scorcher not to mention coming equipped with a hellfire cannon and a pulse turret, the Diabolus is a monster in its own right, which is something you should keep in mind if you decide to have one in your base. The Centurion. Coming in the middle of the ultra heavy class of mechs, this beast has a ton of armor and a powerful shield and point defense turret to boot. That's right, I said point defense. This mobile weapons platform can run and gun, no mods required. Easily one of the best additions to your arsenal since sliced bread. The War Queen stand near the top of all mechanoids, a terrifying monster capable of great destruction. Equipped with a charge blaster turret, the War Queen can lay down some damage on your enemies. Not only that, but you can use up the steel in your urchin to spawn war urchins in groups of three from its large body. The body can hold up to 600 steel and urchins cost 25 steel each. Imagine this thing at a raid. Yeesh. Finally, we have the Apocryon. This beast comes equipped with a poison needle gun that can snipe enemies from afar. Not only that, but it can long jump and resurrect recently deceased mechs. The Apocryon is an excellent support mech to keep your bots moving during a harsh raid. While I got you, mind hitting that subscribe button really helps us out. Most of you aren't subscribed. While you're at it, check out the Patreon. A dollar a month goes a long way for us on the team so we can keep doing what we love. The final bit of this video is all about upgrading your Mechaniter so that they can perform at peak capacity all the time. The first and most simple thing you can do is build some band nodes around your base to increase your Mechaniter's bandwidth. After that, we can move on to gear, starting us off with the control sublink. Installing a control sublink allows you to have more control groups and, in effect, better control over your robots. Mechanoids being controlled by a Mechaniter with a control sublink will also get a work speed bonus, and to make things even better, control sublinks can 
can stack up to three times per pawn. The remote repairer is a pretty self-explanatory implant. It allows you to remotely control the repair mechanites inside your mechanoids from a distance to allow self-maintenance of your droid army. Simple, right? What's more, the implant can be installed up to three times to increase the repair range. The repair probe is the second maintenance implant you can get after that. The repair probe increases the speed the mechaniter can perform maintenance on mechanoids, and just like the others, this implant can stack for maximum effect. Next, we have the remote shielder. This is an awesome piece of hardware that can stack up to three times. It allows you to place a defense shield on a mech of your choosing. The downside is that your mechaniter needs to focus on the mech really hard. It's still cool for helping Scorchers walk up to your foes mid-raid though. The final implant is the mech gestation processor. It is a simple implant that increases the rate at which mechs will grow in the gestation tanks. These doohickeys can stack up to six times for max effect and help you produce massive armies. At the end of this list, we have all the wearable mechaniter gear. Starting us off with the airwire headset. Starting to feel like some cyberpunk over here. Airwire headsets increase the bandwidth of a mechaniter by three. Equip that same pawn with the new control pack so you can have a different control group to sort all those mechs you're going to have. If you want to go extra nuts and make an RA headset that will increase your mechaniter's bandwidth by six, combine that with the new bandwidth pack that increases the mechaniter's bandwidth by an additional nine, I think you get the picture. You can increase this even further using the integrator headset for its nine bandwidth bonus. Next up is the mech lord armor. Beyond here be dragons boys. The mech lord suit is a piece of heavy armor for your mechaniter. While it is not as strong as other armor like cataphract armor, it still has shot protection of 92% and it provides your mechaniter with an additional 12 bandwidth. The mech commander helmet adds an additional 6 bandwidth and provides just over 69% shot resistance. The mech lord helmet on the other hand provides an additional 12 bandwidth and has 92% shot protection. As you can see, all this gear is excellent and useful for helping you make the most powerful mechaniter you could possibly have. Now that you all know how to raise a mech army, go out, conquer all your enemies. I have some fat people to attend to.